Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving a functional equation from Indian National Math Olympiads. We have f of x squared plus y times f of z equals x times f of x plus z times f of y. And we're going to be looking for the values of f of x. So, with functional equations, you know, a lot of times we replace x, y, z with zero, or sometimes we uh, just replace x with x, y with x, and z with x, and so on and so forth. So we use some special values, and we keep doing this until we get something that makes sense. And until we have an idea about what the function is, a lot of times it's a good idea to find f of zero. Uh, and if you can't find it directly, sometimes we call it f of zero equals c, C is a constant, and then we plug it in, you know, keep doing it until we get something meaningful. So I'll be presenting two methods, and let's start with the first one. So in order to explain uh, which notation I use, so I'm going to be replacing, let's say I replace x with x, y with y, and z with z. I'm going to represent it with an ordered triple, so I'm going to write it as x, comma, y, comma, z. This just means that replace x with x, replace y with y, and replace z with z. Great. So let's go ahead and start by using uh, 0, 0, 0. Okay. 0, 0, 0 basically means that replace x with 0, y with 0, and z with 0. A lot of times, uh, this is something that you should try first. So now if I do that, I'm going to get on the left-hand side inside the parentheses, everything will be 0. Uh, now, even though I don't know f of 0, I'm going to be getting uh, the following, f of 0 plus 0 times f of 0. So even though I don't know f of 0, this is going to become 0. So that's kind of nice. I'm going to get 0 pretty much on both sides. So this gives us f of 0 equals 0, which is super duper important. Great. So f of 0 is 0 regardless of the values of you know x, y, z. Um, and let's uh, see how we can use this. Now, I still want to re replace some of the variables with 0, so let's go ahead and do the following. How about we use um, x as x, but the others as 0. So x0, 0, 0 is going to give us the following. Let's go ahead and take a look at the original problem. If I replace x with x, everything is going to stay the same, but y and z will make some of the things disappear. Like, for example, this is going to disappear and this is going to disappear. So we're going to end up with the following. We're going to get f of x squared plus, and here you're going to notice that um, you're going to get nothing else, so it's going to be 0. I don't have to write it. So f of x squared is just going to become x times f of x. Now this is important because this just gives us something in terms of a single variable, uh, which is something that can be used later. Okay, so let's go ahead and save it. Now I'm going to replace x with x, y with x, and z with x. So everything is x, 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 x. Okay, from here we get the following. So if you replace x with x, uh, y with x here, so you're going to get y times f of x. So it's going to look like this f of x squared plus x times f of x. And on the right hand side, you have x times f of x plus x times f of x. So it's just going to be 2x times f of x. Now, this is, this is good because we do have something for x times f of x. And, you know, we can always uh, use these two together. But let's go ahead and leave it like that. And now, since we got an x squared in both of these equations, notice that we have f of x squared something, it would make sense if you replace something with x squared, and that would be the z value. So I'm going to replace x with x, and then y with 1, and z with x squared. And this is going to give me the following. Uh, if you look at the original problem, maybe I should copy that equation somewhere here, like f of x squared plus y f of z equals x f of x plus z f of y. Okay, so now I'm going to replace x with x, so that's going to stay the same, f of x squared, but y is going to be 1, so I don't have to worry about the y anymore, f of z is just going to be f of x squared, so x squared plus f of x squared, and then on the right hand side, uh, you're going to, uh, x is going to be unchanged, so it's going to be x f of x, plus z is x squared, and y is 1, so it's going to give me x squared times f of 1. Now, f of 1 is a constant, you got to remember that. And not just using the equation that we just obtained previously, f of x squared plus x f of x, right? Uh, that's going to uh, give us uh, actually something nice, right? 
Okay, let's see what I did here. Okay, that's not right. Uh, this is this should be okay. F of x squared plus x f of x. Okay, I don't know where I got the f of x squared from. Okay, so now uh, I can go ahead and use this identity, and that should give me two x f of x equals x f of x plus x squared times f of one, which is a constant, by the way. Now these two are like terms, so we can put everything on the same side and get x f of x equals x squared f of one. Since this is a general term, it doesn't x doesn't have to be zero. Divide both sides by x, and you're gonna get f of x equals x times f of one. And if you set f of one equals c, then you're gonna get f of x equals cx, which is basically a linear function. Great. So we got it, the form for f of x. It is a linear function with no y-intercept or zero y-intercept. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Let's go ahead and plug this in and see what happens. When you substitute this into our original equation, you're going to get the following. So left-hand side is just going to be, you know, here's my original equation. Okay. Since f of x is cx, this is going to be f of x squared plus y times uh, cz, and that's gonna be, you know, cyz, and you're gonna get the following, c times x squared plus cyz, and on the right-hand side, you're gonna get cx squared, because it's x times f of x, which is x times cx, plus cyz. Now, let's go ahead and, you know, um, distribute cx squared plus c squared yz, equals cx squared plus cyz. You don't want to cancel out anything yet. We're going to solve an equation, but obviously cx squared can be subtracted from both sides. And now if you put everything on the same side, obviously yz don't matter here. So we end up with c squared equals c. The reason why they don't matter is because yz can be anything. We, we don't care about them. We care about c. From here, we get either c equals zero or c equals one. And c equals zero just implies, uh, using it with the f of x equals cx, that means f of x is equal to zero. But don't get me wrong, I'm not looking for a, I'm not talking about a particular value whose image is zero, but more like a function that's always zero at every point in the domain. Make sense? Okay, and if c is equal to one, then f of x obviously is going to be x. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the second method. All right, my second method obviously is going to be a little different, but we're gonna use something we've used before. So let's start with x zero zero, and that's going to give us f of x squared equals x f of x. Remember, we, we had this before, right? So we're gonna talk about two cases here, case one. What if f is constant? If f is a constant function, that means f of x is equal to something like c for all x values, right? then we can basically replace the left-hand side with c and the right-hand side is gonna be x times c. And from here, we're gonna get c times one minus x is equal to zero. Since we don't care about the x values here because x can be anything, this means that c is equal to zero. And that just implies that f of x is equal to zero for all x values because we assume that f is a constant and f of x was equal to c. Great, so that gives us one of the solutions that we had before, and let's go ahead and take a look at case number two, where f is not a constant. Now, f is not a constant function. We're gonna suppose the following. I wanna prove that f is surjective, and for that, I wanna start with something like supposing f of a is equal to f of b for some a and b values. All right, so let's consider x, y, a. So I'm going to place x with x, y with y, and z with a constant value like a. So that's going to give me f of x squared plus y times f of a on the left-hand side of my equation. But since f of a is equal to f of b, that's my assumption, that means this is equal to f of x squared plus y times f of b, since f of a and f of b are equal. And this is true for the a and b values that we picked. Now let's go ahead and write the right-hand side of each equation. The, left, uh, the first one gives us x times f of x plus a times f of y. Remember, this, uh, these values are kind of switched around in the equation. And then that is equal to x f of x again, because we have the same x value, plus b times f of y. And this indicates what? 
x f of x cancels out. Obviously, f of y is a general value. That cancels out, and from here we get a equals b. So the assumption f of a equals f of b implies a equals b, and that means that f is surjective. All right, great. Or we can call that onto. Some people call that onto. Okay, great. Now, since f is surjective, let's go ahead and do something else to take advantage of that now. I'm going to use 0 x x, which means replace x with 0, x with uh, y with x, and z with x. Okay, something like that. Now, this is going to give us the following. It's going to give us f of x f of x equals x times f of x, all right? And that is going to equal f of x squared. Where do we get that from? Well, we do know that f of x squared is equal to, we got that here, remember, before case 1. We got that f of x squared is equal to x times f of x, so I can easily replace x times f of x with f of x squared. But take a look at this. We have f of something equals f of something else. Surjectivity implies that x f of x equals x squared. Basically, surjective means uh, you can remove the f, or you can kind of inverse f both sides. It doesn't mean f is bijective, but, you know, a lot of times it will be. Anyways, this implies a really good thing. You can divide both sides by x, and you get f of x equals x for all the x values in the domain. And this gave, gives us the other solution where f is not a constant. All right? And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Sorry about the length of the video. I try to keep it short, but I talk too much. Well, I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Please let me know what you think. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you tomorrow with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.